Well, today we're going to look at the life of this gentleman. It is, of course, James Hutton. He's known as the founder of modern geology. James Hutton was born in Edinburgh in 1726 and died in 1797. He made Scotland become known as, as the birthplace of modern geology. But that's not all he did. He was, uh, he was a geologist, but he was also a medical doctor, a farmer, an entrepreneur, philosopher, environmentalist and polymath. He was a founder member of the Royal Society of Edinburgh and also part of the Scottish Enlightenment. He was a prolific writer. And not only did he uh, write a lot on geology, but also on soils, agriculture, climate, philosophy, and was involved in the earlier versions of natural selection. The inspiration for today's video is from this book here, uh, James Hutton, the founder of modern geology, by Alan McCurdy. And I was very fortunate to meet uh, and talk with uh, Alan McCurdy at a recent lecture at the Aberdeen Geological Society. I'm indebted to Alan for allowing me to use his photographs and presentations presentation material. James Hutton, he was born and grew up in the 1720s in, in Edinburgh, and at that time uh, you can just about make out Edinburgh Castle here, but looks somewhat different to the city of today. He then went to spend a couple of years in Paris, and this is a, a map of Paris in around about 1740, quite a small town at that time, and then back to London, and, and then across to uh, Leiden University in the Netherlands, which is where he, he studied and, and completed his studies and he became a medical doctor. Now, throughout uh, all his education, he was always passionate about uh, chemistry. And uh, it was that, really, that took him back to Edinburgh in 1750. And he was doing chemical experiments with James Davy. The two of them started to produce sal ammoniac, which is the, the salt ammonium chloride. And it's used in dyeing and in metals, I think, uh, in brass and tin. It became a very, very profitable partnership. And it's from this that uh, James Hutton made his money. And with that, he was able to spend his time studying and writing and traveling. So uh, a successful businessman as well. His next sort of interest, he was interested in farming. He went down to both Norfolk and Suffolk, where he spent a lot of time learning the techniques of, uh, of farming and then when his father died he inherited two Scottish farms so he put some of those learnings into practice there and then went on to become an experimenter he started to study the soils and trying to understand uh, what effect they had on crops he had an interest in geology one of the early places he went to visit was up on the north coast of Scotland and he saw these red sandstones of Caithness uh, in the cliffs he also then went on to become both a, an investor and a man Manager of the company that supplied the rocks for lining the, the Forth Clyde Canal, which is shown in the picture there. He was an advisor on Captain Cook's expeditions, uh, advising on the subject of oceanography. Uh, uh, he also studied geology while uh, travelling around England and Wales with, with the engineer James Watt. Now, here he is pictured in amongst, uh, this is Rabbi Burns, Scotland's most famous poet. Here's Sir Walter Scott, and here's the engineers Adam and Watt in Telford. And again, in this shot, here you can see he's he kept good company and was really one of the free thinkers figuring out how everything worked now why was this needed well we have to think back to what geology was in the 1700s at that time we had the irish cleric archbishop usher who came out and he said that he had studied the uh, the old testament in some detail and he worked out that the the earth was actually dated from uh, the 22nd of october 4004 bc at again the time that the rocks it was believed that they were precipitated from, from Noah's floodwaters. That's indeed, granite was the oldest rock, and that's why it was really, really hard and quite crystalline. But the sort of new ideas that Hutton was having was a shell or a coral that's found on the top of a mountain, that probably had originated from the seabed. And then the questions were asked, well, how did it get from the seabed up onto the top of this mountain? And he came up with this idea of the rock cycle, of parts of the earth that were being uplifted, eroded, and then resedimented out in the sea. And then somehow, I mean, he didn't really understand that mechanism, but what, what the causation was, but he said those rocks were lithified, uplifted, and taken back to the tops of mountains. So it was a, a tremendous um, breakthrough in thought. The earth was a heat engine, he said, and this kind of explained that there was massive amounts of heat actually underneath the Earth's crust in, in the mantle. And this was the cause of the volcanoes and, and also was somehow hardening the, the sedimentary rocks. 
also that's obviously uh, pressure and, and uh, chemical changes which we call diagenesis but this was all the evolution of those thoughts and ideas and most importantly he was looking at processes that were going on in the present day and he realized that they were the key to the past and one great example of this is looking at these boulders here in the uh, Colorado River I don't think he ever visited Colorado but here they are today and you can see these present day boulders but you can also go down to Donata Castle just near Stonehaven south of Aberdeen in the uh, in the cliff sections there you see these massive great boulders almost look alike but these are Devonian in age that's about 400 million years no talk about James Hutton would be complete without talking about this outcrop here. If you've been there, it is a very, very difficult outcrop to get to. A very steep grassy slope you have to go down. It is worth it. And what you can see here is you can see the rocks dipping here. And these rocks here are Silurian in age. That's about 450 million years old. And this is uh, known as the these red rocks here that are lying, just dipping over to the left-hand side of this photograph here. These, uh, these are the Devonian old red sandstone, and they date back to about 400 million years. This outcrop, it's really well worth a visit, but uh, be very careful if you're trying to negotiate that steep slope. It, it's known as the, the most important geological site in the world and it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's at Sicker Point which is in Berwickshire on the east coast of uh, Scotland, east of Edinburgh. Now one of the quotes that James Hutton is remembered for is the one, we find no vestige of a beginning, no prospect of an end and, and he was kind of recognising that huge amounts of time must be missing for these rocks to have been folded up and then eroded and this unconformity as it's known was then being overlain by these much younger rocks. And there's, there's tens of millions of years missing at this point in here. The dates were not known at this time. That came along probably in the 1960s with uh, radiometric dating, but it was certainly recognised that there was a significant period of time missing. This outcrop here, shown in this painting from Clark, is from uh, Alice Mill in, in Jedburgh in southern Scotland. And this was the inspiration for the logo in the James Hutton Institute. This is a world acclaimed institute. It's looking after the sustainable use of land and natural resources. Visit their website and find out more about what the James Hutton Institute does today and, and how it helps all around the world. Other works that uh, Hutton was involved with? Well, it was Darwin in, in the late 1700s who was kind of doing his work on the origin of species. But uh, Hutton was involved in about the principles of knowledge at a time when science and religion were toe-to-toe -to -toe in some areas. But uh, he recognised that actually science could coexist and explain some things that perhaps uh, were not factually accurate within the Bible. I'm not sure if I can say that. Well, I just did. Okay, Theory of the Earth. Uh, that was another one of his uh, three volumes, one of which was unpublished. He, he wrote a book on the uh, observations of granite, the principles of knowledge. It's 2,138 pages. That's quite a read. And uh, another unpublished book was The Elements of Agriculture. So he was very widely studied and very... Uh, published widely on a number of things. Now, he died in 1797, and, and it wouldn't be until the uh, the 1960s that uh, the whole concept of plate tectonics and understanding what these mountain building processes were and really understanding the different types of volcanism that we might see around the world. I do recommend Alan McCurdy's book on Amazon and at £12.38. It's a fascinating read. But Alan hasn't just written about James Hutton. He's actually written all of these titles here. He's essentially written about the uh, the geology all around Scotland, a fantastic uh, piece of work. Now, uh, Alan said he was at Aberdeen University, and the one book that he hasn't done yet is the northeast of Scotland. So I think we all hope that he can complete the set and take on one final challenge to, to finish off the tour of Scotland. So uh, I recommend the book to you. Thank you for watching. Please uh, like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell, and we'll find out when uh, our next video comes out. Thanks very much. Bye for now.